Thank you for confirming again. Thanks. Um, I could not join in person, so I apologize to everyone. Um, um, I we just we had a baby two weeks ago, so I decided not to not to travel. Uh, so I told uh, Diane that I could still be in the in the panel, but I need to be remote. So thank you, Diane, for facilitating everything. Um, my name is Abu Mosa. I'm a senior director of informatics um, at the University of Missouri uh, School of Medicine. Um, also an associate professor of biomedical informatics and a part of the presentation will be done by Vasanti um, Mandadi, who is on site. Um, uh, she will take care of half of the presentation. And we also listed Saber who are, were, was one of our major developer in, in this process uh, uh, of harmonization of the corner CDM to uh, I2B2. So the objective of this presentation is to describe how to harmonize the corner CDM. I'm gonna uh, move that, that thing. Okay, now I think you see the entire screen now. Uh, to describe the, how to harmonize the corner CDM to uh, the I2B2, recognize that I2B2 data model can be interoperable as views on the corner common data model. And also, the greatest benefit that we can bring on the table is that we could support a multi-institutional I2B2 uh, quality platform for a uh, collaborative cl a clinical research network, uh, which is uh, primarily targeted for the, the PCORNET, uh, the clinical research network. Um, the motivation um, was that, uh, you know, th there are the two major thing in this uh, health data world. Um, that uh, that the community has been working over time. Um, and I2B2 has been pioneer in that initiative at the very early age. So lots of kudos go to uh, uh, Professor Murphy uh, on, on increasing the accessibility of, um, of uh, to the data through a software application, which is I2B2. And lately there has been other initiative uh, created to create software, software applications to, to provide improved access to data, especially targeted to uh, the researcher who cannot uh, do programming um, by themselves. Um, but then data usability was another aspect of it. Like, can I take the, can I extract the data out of the platform and analyze it and also interpret it and understand the data? So from that perspective, and the common data model uh, are in a much better position. So we heard about OMOP common data model. There is another common data model, the PCORNET common data model, which is funded by the patient-centered outcomes research institution. And in this slide, I put the, the dashboard. You don't need to interpret any of it, but by looking into the complexity of this PCORNET dashboard, um, you can imagine that a complex network operation is ongoing and highly successful. Um, and lately we realized and identified that self-service query capability is the key to provide increased access to data for clinical research. And if it is instantaneous access at any time, that is much, much better. So I2B2 uh, software applications comes into discussion from this perspective. I needed to disclose that a uh, couple of, um, all the information related to PCORNET is coming from PCORNET presentations. I organized uh, for, for this talk. Um, all right, so PCORNET, what is PCORNET? If you don't know about it, it's a network of networks. That means there are total nine networks and it supports clinical research. It unites data and communities for faster and more targeted research. And the communities are patient, providers, and researchers in that context. And because of the network operation, because of this funded network operation, um, and all the network partners' commitment, we can provide access to real-world data on a national scale, uh, which is over 66 million um, which this statistics is a little old, but uh, it would be more than that. Um, and facilitate processes, um, processes for supporting a full uh, stake network operation. 
Now you can think about what does that mean? There are a lot of things in a, in a network operation is needed for, for running a successful clinical research network. For example, supporting feasibility queries, identify patient populations for trial recruitment, um, making sure that data curation and quality checks, which is uh, which exists in the NP coordinate in a coordinated fashion. That means quarterly it will be done and every site has to pass the data quality checks to be approved. Um, it provides connection to patients and providers, not only as data in the common data model, but also um, also for recruitment purpose uh, and also uh, collaboration purpose as well. Um, and also data sharing for research projects, obviously under each individual research protocols and agreements. And one of the network that University of Missouri is the lead site, the network name is Greater Plains Collaborative Network. Um, the network size is 14 institution, um, including a new institution, UCLA, in the network. Uh, prior, it was 13 institution. And the penetration of patient is pretty much um, the entire USA based on our zip code distribution, but you see the concentration uh, is high around uh, the geographical location of the sites. Um, we believe that we are the largest network in terms of the size of the population that we bring to PicorNet, which is more than 34 million patients. For providing data in a usable format, which is the PicorNet common data model, every site has to go through a complex transformation and mapping process to the common data model. Every site has to pass the data characterization and the data check uh, procedure, which is every quarterly, and this the data check, data characterization, and uh, the quality check, the DCQ process, uh, is evolved over time. Uh, and in the actually in the dashboard that I presented, you can see that uh, the number of data check uh, increased over time. Um, and every site has to be compatible with the process and uh, pass and get the seal approved uh, to, to be able to continue on the network and participate in the real clinical research or any, any retrospective analysis uh, of data. Um, in terms of the data representation, there are minimal set of data representation, but there are uh, opportunities for further enrichment by participating sites to a particular clinical research. Um, and those can be facilitated through the uh, clinical observation table or the general observation table. That means if a site is not participating in a clinical research, may not bring certain data elements or observations into the platform, but other sites participating in a particular study can, uh, can do that uh, through this mechanism. Um, so what we did uh, to, to increase accessibility, what we demonstrated as a recipe, there are other institutions are having different uh, recipes. Um, our recipe includes op making I2B2 interoperable on the PicCornet common data model. And I think what does that mean? You know by now from Jeff's, uh, Jeff's presentation on the OMOP and I2B2 harmonization. Uh, it's a similar process and Vasanti will go uh, into some detail. So through this process in the Greater Plains Collaborative among the 13 networks, um, we are running I2B2 on top of 18.4 uh, billion um, records. Um, we implemented this over Snowflake using a Snowflake secure view and secure share concept. You see the dotted uh, database boxes are of views uh, and the solid boxes are actual data. So we tried to present the concept in this diagram and I2B2 uh, 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 data model harmonization on top of PicorNet um, common data model uh, and in, in concert with the SCT uh, ontology uh, enables the entire process to query all sites data um, and return the result with, with site breakdowns if, um, uh, if the uh, if the, if, the, if the person uh, doing the query wants to select that option. Uh, that means we implemented a site uh, specific breakdown plugin to facilitate uh, that process. 
And there is another presentation by Sauver uh, related to I2B2 on Snowflake. Um, I, I hope you would enjoy the talk. Uh, and he's gonna go into detail about, about, about those components. Um, so it's powerful, right? Um, it, it provides efficient data utilization. Uh, sites do not have to do any additional step except uh, giving visibility to the data um, to I2B2. Um, and uh, to the I2B2 application. Um, and it, I2, you know, the I2B2 query engine is intuitive query development process. Uh, it also facilitates expanded research potential and collaboration as you can um, look into the data instant instantaneously as a researcher. Now I will ask Vasanthi to uh, take over from here. Vasanthi, are you going to share your screen or do you want me to? Um, yeah. Can I see that here too? If I share. You can continue to share, Dr. Mosa, maybe based on I, what I'm talking, you can switch slides. Just say next. Okay. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, the process of um, harmonization from PicoNet to C, um, PicoNet CDM to I2B2. So we have implemented the same process like Jeff, um, Jeff's team has done. So we started with our PicoNet CDM um, views. I mean, we in our ETL process, in the de-identified data will be views. So we started with that and then created uh, uh, patient dimension and, and um, all the dimension and um, fact tables as views like you see in the, in the diagram over there. So we had to do, um, in, so we added um, columns, additional columns, I, uh, I2B2 related columns to the existing um, uh, views so that it will it, it can be used by the application. So I'll go into those details. Um, I, and also you can see that we have used um, Snowflake Cloud for the entire um, process. So if you see in this diagram, you could see um, which PicOrner CDM table used to create used to be create the um, fact view needed for the I2B2. So, for example, the demographic will be used to create the patient dimension versus uh, the death table in PicOrner CDM also goes into the patient dimension table. Asanti, you need to tell me next if you want okay. me to move. Oh yeah, next. So do you want me to start on this slide or next? Ne next, yeah. Because you, so, okay, so you're done with presenting this as well. Okay, yes. Thank you. So I'm, um, so this diagram shows like how we created the I2B2 concept um, code column or the I2B2 related from the PicoNet CDM existing columns. If you see the DX type and DX here are um, existing PicoNet columns that we have combined to create the um, I2B2 concept code column and to al align with the ACT ontology, you have to append the um, some values to the existing PicoNet columns. So if you see on the right corner, um, you could see how the lab loink column or the result modifier column that exists in the PicoNet CDM are used to create the lab fact table for the I2B2. So some similar transformations are done. So next slide. Um, Maybe I could try. I'm not sure where my cursor is, so. Okay. Uh, I get to the cursor. Okay. Yeah, so in this slide, um, which slide are we? Okay. So I talk about the, um, Okay, we have implemented um, some validation process to ensure that the data integrity, um, we have the data integrity. So we have to run um, set different kind of queries on both the Snowflake platform, which has the PicOrner CDM use, and also ran the same qu queries on the uh, web client to make sure the results match exactly the same, like the patient counts. So these are some of the example queries that we have run. Um, next slide. So that with this process, um, we encountered some challenges that we were discussing in the other presentations as well. 
about the ontology mapping we have to make sure the ontology map um, mapping is right so that the information is um, accurately uh, represented and um, like the grayed out things that you have in your um, in your ontology tree we have found all those gaps which exist in the uh, the ontologies that exist in the picorner cdm but are missing from the act ontology we have uh, club them all and put it under an ontology tree rather than you have grid, grid them out. And um, there's some challenges with maintaining the harmonization process because Big Cornet CDM has versions, they keep adding columns sometimes, and I2B2 might also have changes. And I have explained how we ensure that the data integrity exists. And all the source code. Um, right now we have Snowflake version of this harmonization in GitHub available at these locations and there are other links as well um, about these Snowflake implementation which um, Saber will be presenting tomorrow. Um, there are some future developments could be done on uh, ontology gaps. We haven't implemented any um, done anything with the modifiers yet so that's could that could be uh, something we could do in future and automating every um, the entire data refresh could be a possibility. Asanthi, am, the... am I on the correct slide? No, uh, next. So this, this is the GitHub um, resources, like I was mentioning. And if we go to the next slide, next slide, I already talked about. So these are the future developments I've been talking about and um, next slide would be the University of Missouri team. Any questions? Maybe okay. the questions are later after the panel is over. <laughs>